thank the cadets and for the other students who helped with this uh, ceremony today. We had the Anacostia Quartet who was playing before we, um, the services began. And I want to thank um, the students who have been very instrumental in helping put this day on today. I think it's that tomorrow is Veterans Day and we have a number of active military in the audience and some who have recently retired, so thank you for your service. And of course, thanks. I want to thank all of you for coming. We have a lot of people who have never been to the University of Maryland before, and we have those who have returned, and then we have several alum in the audience. So it's wonderful to have you back on campus and to join us in this celebration. The Department of Communication is home to the center that we are renaming today after the Rosenkers, and it has a very long history of 116 years on this campus. Its name has changed a lot. It wasn't the same name as when Mark went to school here. And it's changed its mission you know, since that time. But one of the things that's remained a strong commitment is this belief in the importance of communication to public life. Today, our core principle that guides our department is communication for the public good. And the Rosenkirch Center is committed to enhancing the public good, a core principle embedded in the nation's founding. The department is committed to research and education in communication, and we provide instruction and we provide uh, teaching in the role of communication across a diversity of context. And you can see around the room with the different banners, we have people who study and teach in areas such as health, media, politics, and public relations. We're home to over 50 PhD students. We have 40 Masters of Professional Studies students in interpreting and translation. And we have 800 undergraduate majors in our discipline. In addition, we teach over 4,000 seats each year in the orals of oral, oral principles of communication. And our department has three research centers. And one is dedicated to the study of health and risk communication. It's just launching a new program on this, the idea of cancer communication that's sponsored with the National Cancer Institute as well as the UMBC Medical School. We also have another center that's dedicated to the study of oral communication principles that provides the, the foundation for the basic course that we teach 4,000 seeds per year. And they do such uh, work where they partner with STEM fields and try to help students learn how to talk about their scientific research to lay audiences so that there's greater uh, understanding. And then the third center is the one that we are here to rename today, and it addresses and grapples with um, research in public commu political communication and civic leadership. So in our 116 years, tens of thousands of students have graduated from our department. They now work in public service, they work in government, they work in NGOs, they've joined the military, they've gone to law school, they have gone to and gotten their PhDs. They work in interpreting and translation. They work in health careers and a whole host of uh, different careers. And Major General Mark Rosenkirch's distinction as an alum of our department is extraordinary. Your gifts, Mark and Heather, will help sustain the department into the next century of research, education, and service. And with it, we will honor your most impressive careers in your philanthropic spirit. So we are pleased to rename our center after Mark and Heather. Our center's mission is designed to unite research, education, and public engagement to foster democratic communication by a diverse people. We're a, a nonpartisan center. We're designed, we really work hard to bring students together with members of the community so that we deliberate over the pressing issues that face our campus, our community, and the larger world. Those of us who study rhetoric and politics believe that how we talk about politics matters. We believe that how we talk to one another about our political lives matter, and we believe that in the importance of debate and the power of deliberation. We are especially committed to recovering and preserving speeches, and that's one of the things we do through the center, so that we begin to understand and save those past debates and how they help us guide the future. Our Voices of Democracy project and our Recovering Democracy archives help ensure that we do not forget the issues and ideas that have defined our nation throughout its history. We create teaching and learning materials for use in classrooms. 
and we study and teach uh, such uh, units on, as Lincoln's Gettysburg Address or Susan B. Anthony's, is it a crime to, for a U.S. citizen to vote? And we are engaged in efforts to recover speech as we go into the archives and try to find speeches that would be lost to time if we don't do engage in such preservation efforts. We also study political advertisements during campaigns, and so we study the president as well. Our political advertising resource center is a source of information about political information as it unfolds. We bring students together to debate issues that are pressing within our, our culture at the time. We feature Turk Town Halls, and we're very excited to launch a new lecture series named after Mark and Heather that will focus on political communication. Unfortunately, we live in a world where it's become increasingly difficult to talk to one another about our political differences. <clears throat> Debate in Congress is becoming all too rare. Compromising political principles is now oftentimes seen as a weakness. We feel more comfortable talking mostly to people who share our same beliefs and we try to turn ourselves away from those whose opinions differ. But those of us involved in the center believe that communicating across our differences is necessary for promoting the public good. And the center was founded with this commitment as a core principle. Little did we know when we founded the center that we were going to, that its mission would be challenged in, in the beginning. We launched the center in early September of 2001. In, in two weeks, 9-11 had happened, and we were left at that moment of trying to decide how we were going to host our inaugural event. We had cases across the country where students from the Middle East were being harassed on college campuses, and on our campus, we had staff and students and faculty who lost loved ones in the attack who were trying to make meaning and figure out how to move forward. So we decided to host this event to bring people together to try to talk about the fears that they were experiencing as in the immediate aftermath. And in that event, <coughs> students came, and students came from all different walks of life. We had members of the ROTC who came, whose what they knew, their lives were now going to be forever changed because once they graduated, they were probably facing some kind of war-like situation. And we had students who came who, let, who really believed that war was not the answer to any kind of conflict. We had students who came who were international students who were feeling like they were going to war that they were going to lose their visa. And then we had students who came who wanted to talk about the openness of our immigration policies. These were not easy conversations, and they're not easy conversations now, but we believe that we have to have those conversations and we have to talk through these difficult issues. I think it's fitting, then, that we are now naming our center after Mark and Heather Rosenberg. As the center launched to the tragedy of 9-11, Major General Rosenberg was by President George W. Bush's side on September 11, 2001. He helped manage the chaos of the day from Air Force One as Deputy Assistant to the President and Director of the White House Military Office. And Heather Rosenberg responded to such attacks by helping manage public affairs operations and providing strategic counsel to the TSA. Major General Rosenberg got his start in our department, then called something different radio, TV, and communication. And the university is where he also became a cadet like you as he started his career in Air, Air, the Air Force ROTC. After leaving the University of Maryland, he served in the U.S. Vietnam War for a short time and then, and then rising to the rank of Major General in the U.S. Air Force Reserves. Major General Rosenberg served early in his career as the Managing Director of the Washington, D.C. Office for the United Network for Organ Sharing. And he spent most of his career in communication-related fields, often working in the White House for Republican presidents. He has a lot of stories to tell about his time within the White House. President George W. Bush appointed him to the head of the National Transportation Safety Board after he stepped down as director of the White House Military Office, where he also showed great leadership in both positions. He continues to develop his expertise in transportation. He's involved in the development of autonomous cars and serving as a transportation expert for CBS News and WTOP Radio. And he continues to show leadership in transportation, which just recently named in the last couple of weeks to serve on the Metro Safety Commission by the governor of Virginia. Heather Rosenberg received her Bachelor of Arts degree in Mass Communication from the University of Denver. She spent her career working in public relations, strategic communication, and crisis communication. We offer degrees at both the bachelor and the PhD level in our department in all these areas. 
Heather Rosenberg has worked on various projects related to the Department of Homeland Security, including FEMA and ICE. She also worked for the George H.W. Bush Administration's Council on Environmental Quality. And she served as the Executive Director of the Federal Advisory Commission on Electronic Commerce, a group that was created by Congress. She's now the President and Founder of HBR and Associates, a public relations consulting firm. So we're very excited to name our center after Mark and Heather Rosenkirk. We hope to inspire students to enter public service, to engage their communities, and to support the people in need around them. You both have dedicated your lives to public service and have shown a commitment to your communities as well as to your country. It's fitting that our center will now pay honor to your many contributions. I'm now most pleased to introduce Dr. William Cohen, who's the Associate Professor and Dean of Undergraduate Studies. He's also a Professor of English, and he will offer a few remarks. Thank you, Sean, and good, uh, good afternoon. Uh, I'm so pleased to be able to uh, acknowledge the uh, extraordinary gift that Mark and Heather have made to the university and uh, this extraordinary center that is being uh, named in their, in their honor uh, in the Department of Communications is such a wonderful bringing together of your interests and passions and commitments and of the, uh, the, the many efforts that we make on this campus, as Sean was saying, to uh, study and promote uh, uh, political communication and, um, and to bring those efforts together with the uh, extraordinary contributions that our cadets, particularly in the Air Force, ROTC make uh, to the campus and to the nation. Uh, the Air Force ROTC, as I'm sure Salt will share with you, has a very uh, storied and distinguished history on this campus. Uh, it's been around a very long time and has uh, some really incredible uh, alumni uh, like Mark. And um, I have to share with you that I first met Mark last spring when we rededicated the armory as the new home for uh, all three who brought together the existing Air Force, uh, long-standing Air Force ROTC unit with the uh, uh, Army uh, ROTC detachment as well as the newly stood up uh, Navy and Marines uh, ROTC. They all are now um, co-located in the armory, back in the armory. Uh, they had been up at Cole, and when Cole was renovated, uh, there was an opportunity to bring them together. We invited uh, Mark to serve as the uh, keynote at that wonderful uh, dedication event and I have to tell you, I learned something about political communication in that talk. It was one of the most, uh, there was a lot of brass there, there were a lot of uh, uniforms and uh, pomp and circumstance, and this was, it was a riveting, it was really, it has stayed with me, uh, the, the talk you gave. It was one of the funniest and most engaging and most effective <laughs> and most exciting. Uh, <laughs> I know, you can have better leading now. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, uh, I, I began to see a glimmer, as I'm sure many of you uh, have much more experience than I do, with the, um, the wit and the wisdom and the um, incredible commitment that, that um, the Rosenkers have, have exhibited over many years. So we are truly grateful for the uh, contributions that this gift makes, uh, not only to, uh, to uh, the long, uh, into the future for the, um, the Center for Communication and Civic Leadership, but also uh, in the gift that it provides for Detachment 330 uh, in the Air Force, uh, which will make a great difference to um, supporting the needs of that unit. Yeah, and, and Saul can tell us a little bit more about that when he has a chance to make his remarks. Um, this gift from Mark and Heather also has a really important impact on uh, our ROTC cadets in that it gives preference to them in receiving the Rosinger Scholarships. Um, future cadet, they will attract future cadet, cadets uh, into military public affairs, which is a great value, uh, I think, for all of us, and signifies the importance of this connection between communications and uh, government and military service, um, and it is a great uh, way of honoring uh, your careers and your passions, uh, as well as uh, aligning that with, with the future generations. Um, I also wanted to just uh, say one word on behalf of Dr. Lowe, who I know very much wanted to be here but had a conflict, uh, and I believe you will be having a chance to see him at the game tomorrow uh, in, in the President's spots of the uh, Veterans State football game, and so if you will come up here, Mark. Cheryl, something. Thank you. This is Heather. This is your oh, no, 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 no. If you come up here, we had to put it on. Oh, yeah. I have <laughs>
Thanks. Uh, thank you. here at the University of Maryland and he's also a professor of aerospace studies so he also has quite a great few more. So uh, good afternoon everybody. Uh, I am uh, excited to be here. General Heather, thank you for inviting uh, representatives from your former outfit uh, here to share in this. Uh, unlike public affairs officers, weather officers are taught to brief the forecast, brief the impacts, and then get out. <laughs> uh, but uh, no, we're very excited to be here. Obviously, uh, our heritage is, is your heritage, and uh, we are so grateful for uh, the uh, what you have put in place that uh, will leave a legacy for these cadets the cadets that will follow. Uh, it obviously, it, you know, it helps with uh, with our recruiting. Um, you know, we these cadets will enter an Air Force that has been in constant combat since I first became a second lieutenant. Uh, and uh, but the good news is, is that despite that, they are as ready today uh, as they have always been. Uh, Part of why they're ready is because of the legacy that they have inherited. Uh, the legacy that they have inherited from uh, you and the many other officers who have served not just in the Air Force but in all of our services. Uh, so again, I want to say thank you to that. Uh, I thought it was interesting uh, that uh, I was thinking last night about this event today and I got an email that said uh, a, a book that I ordered had arrived, uh, and so Dana Perino's uh, book that was just published, I started reading that, I was thinking about you as, uh, as I turned that on. Uh, I have very little time, so I have a lot of audio books. <laughs> um, but uh, as the general knows, uh, it's somewhat tradition in the military services that uh, as something that we do as a, uh, a token of gratitude uh, is our unit's challenge points. And uh, so, sir, I wanted to make sure that uh, both of you had a, uh, had a copy of these. <laughs> sir, very much for the Colonel, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Dr. Linda Alberti. She is the Associate Dean for Research and Planning in the College of Arts and Humanities, which is where our department and our center are located. She's also a professor of communication and she's an affiliate faculty member in our center. And she's one of the, I think, five of us who sat around and created the center back in, in 2000. <laughs> need a microphone. I think everybody can hear me. I don't really know how I can come after those amazing speeches and thank yous, so I unfortunately don't know you personally, and it sounds like I really have missed out over the years, but I'm looking forward to maybe getting to know you better in the next few years. But on behalf of the Dean of the College of Arts and Humanities, Bonnie Thornton Dill, I want to thank everyone for coming and say how wonderful it is to see the growth and success of the newly named Rosenker Center for Political Communication and Civic Leadership. But I did want to speak on a personal note about being part of the team that created the center in 2001. Um, Sean mentioned sitting around the table, that would be the table in my small townhouse at the time. And this was. Um, um, with a one-year-old running around and a couple two-year-olds in the area and five of us getting together to try to figure out the mission and objectives, 
That took about an hour. What took days and days and days was naming it. I don't know if anybody has ever been on a committee with rhetoric professors, but every word is craftsman and artistry, and you can't say the if you mean it, and what does political communication really mean, and does civic mean what it used to mean, and what is it going to mean? And I just said, let's just name the thing. Too bad you weren't there, because then we would have had a much easier time of it. But I wanted to say over the years, seeing it strengthen and grow, and now being able to proudly be called the Rosenker Center, I'm just pleased that I had a chance to be there from the beginning to now. And so I want to thank you both for making this a lot easier for us moving forward. So thank you to Mark and Heather Rosenker for giving us the center and giving us this opportunity to grow and strengthen even more in the future. So now we're going to have the opportunity for both Heather and Mark to offer some comments, and we're going to start with Heather. Thank you, everyone who is here. This is Tim. Hi, I can see you. <laughs> Sorry. New faces have arrived since Dr. White. Dr. Yeah, Dr. White. Yeah, Dr. White. Dr. White. Um, it's a real pleasure, and it really is remarkable for all your support and I don't say your support's remarkable but it's just remarkable to us and so on behalf of Mark and myself just thank you so much for being here. There are folks and friends and business associates that Mark and I have known um, since the 70s in some cases, right? 60s. Since the 60s in some cases, not me of course. <laughs> but it's really great and it's humbling to have everyone here today so thank you. Um, as Sean said, I went to the University of Denver, it's in Colorado, <laughs> it's not Maryland, uh, and I went there for the sunshine and the skiing, and on the way I got a degree in mass communication. So it actually is working, Sean, I just think we have to get real close. It's like that American Idol stuff, which I will do. Um, and when I was at DU, uh, we didn't have a football team, we had a hockey team. We did have football when the school started, but it had since gone away. And so hockey was our big team sport. And that was great. And then we also had a very good lacrosse team. And you all may know that two years ago, DU beat Maryland. <laughs> yes, in lacrosse. I know, but I can do that because I'm here. And they beat Maryland in lacrosse. Now, I can't say that the same has been true for the next two years since then. Um, DU hasn't held up its part of the bargain. Um, but that's, and then I met Mark. And I met Mark, and Mark has, taught me a lot about the University of Maryland. Um, he's made me basically I'm an adopted Terrapin, is what I call myself. And I also have several friends in the audience here today who are alums, and they too have made me understand and get a really warm spot in my heart for this university. Um, Mark got a chance here. Um, I'm sure many of you all did in some parts of your life, but Mark got a chance here. He had a professor who took a chance on him. Professor Aylward, right? Professor Aylward, who took a chance on him. And as a result, um, Mark's been able to be more than successful, I would say, in any one of our categories of judging. Um, Sean gave some history about Mark. And what I just want to say is, I'm really glad I've been able to be on this ride with you. This has been wonderful. It's kind of odd that we're now at this time of our life where we're doing something like this. <laughs> but um, I'm really grateful that we can do it. And I'm really grateful that um, we don't have to be dead and be recognized. <laughs> They don't. So we at least get a chance to share it all with you guys. Um, I'm also very much looking forward to helping uh, the center and providing whatever guidance, support, speaking, whatever. I know Mark will as well. And I encourage, because clearly my career and Mark's career, at least on the communications part of it, have tracked. Um, we all have several friends in here who are also in the communications world. So don't be surprised if we don't call on you all to, to participate in the seminar series or contribute back to this center. Um, thanks for the ride, Mark, and I'm, it's your turn. <laughs> that was a tough act to follow, let me assure you. And uh, thank you very much, Heather. Uh, and 
thanks to all of my friends, my colleagues, uh, my one relative who is still with me here. Thanks for coming. Uh, thank you to the entire team at the University of Maryland and its uh, communications department and the honor in which they are uh, bestowing this new center, the old center with a new name on us. In the spirit of accuracy and transparency and, and that we want to put forth in this center, I am not a Vietnam veteran. I am a Vietnam era veteran. Now, the Air Force has sent me to many godforsaken places, but Vietnam was not one of them. So let me just clarify that. Uh, I went to other places um, and uh, served my time there as well. Uh, it's great to be back on this campus. Let me, let me just tell you that. I, I, I've seen a lot of changes. Uh, uh, there used to be, and I don't know if you all remember this, back when I was here on Route 1, a big, big uh, uh, billboard, and it said Dr. Dennis Levinson, Doctor of Veterinary Medicine and Taxidermy. <laughs> and his slogan, and he wasn't a graduate of this school, but uh, his slogan was, either way you get your dog back. <laughs> Clearly, he, he could have been inspired by, by the communication department, but he wasn't. He that be a dog stuffer. So, um, let me thank you. People that, in fact, have uh, come to, uh, to celebrate this occasion from uh, back in my fraternity. Back when I was uh, a young man, as a student, I assure you, the folks that are here that knew anything about me, when I was matriculating here at this great university. Uh, one, they would never have thought that something later was going to be named after me. Uh, certainly a department that, in fact, uh, I studied in, uh, in there, uh, with any sense, they would have said uh, who and why and how. And, but most importantly, I have to tell you that this school gave me opportunities that in my wildest dreams I could have never thought were going to come to me. Uh, I was not a great academic achiever in high school. Now let's, let's say that. I can be blunt. I can be in the spirit of honesty and transparency. I, uh, I got through high school uh, with a, a C average, but I got through. And it wasn't good enough to come to the University of Maryland. I'll be frank about that. I had to go to another school before I ended up <laughs> getting the privilege of coming here. But uh, my father said, if you work hard and you demonstrate that you can do this kind of work, you can go anywhere you want. And I said, Dad, the only place I really want to go is the University of Maryland. And I was working while I was going to school in Baltimore and uh, at a television station, WBAL. I was a stage manager there. And Dr. Tom Elwood, who uh, at that time was a professor in radio and television, later became the chairman of the department, uh, came in to do a uh, little TV show, a public affairs show. And I walked up to him because I really knew that I wanted to come to this great school. And I said, sir, I, uh, my, my academic uh, background isn't uh, as good as it, it could have been. But I want to come to Maryland, and I, I'll do anything and everything to guarantee that you will make me, I will make you proud. And he said, "You come see me." And I went to see him. And in my, I came here as a sophomore, the fall of 1966, almost 50 years ago. <clears throat> this man took a chance on me. I came to this school. I blossomed in this school. I learned from this school. I got my commission from this school. I have everything that I have today began at this school. And that is a reason why I have decided with Heather that we need to give back to this school, and give back particularly to the department that gave me everything that I have. So I am uh, absolutely honored and pleased to think that 50 years ago, sitting in this lecture hall, 50 years ago, wow, that's a long time, and I was, when I first got here, I had a 28-inch waist, I had very dark hair, I, uh, I was cool, I got to go to the best fraternity on campus, am I right, Sigma Alpha Mu guys, Sammy? 
And um, <laughs> this, this campus gave me so much. And to now have a, a center where, in fact, the fiber, if you will, of what I learned here and what I am as a communicator, having been involved in 10 presidential elections, five of which, unfortunately, we lost, <laughs> five transition teams, one of which stopped on election day, I do have somewhat of an understanding of the value of political communications and what it can bring to the nation's discussion, debate, and hopefully its success in future. So to have this named after us, a political communications center with civic leadership is an honor, it is humbling, and we are most grateful. Thank you all very much. a couple of small gifts to give to you and one is a, a gift I think that's fitting the, the day that you came in and visited and we realized that Tom Elward's picture was on the wall and it was uh, Mark's mentor it's like it's it kind of meant to be so we wanted to you know honor that that relationship and also give you the picture a copy of the picture that so that you would have it as well Thank you. Great man did, who he is. Oh, okay. Great. Uh, normally, you would see him with a pipe in his mouth, but uh, being politically correct, they took it out. <laughs> and not only did he help me get into this great university and help me with my grades to the point where I was, though those were strong enough to get into graduate school. Um, it was this guy who made it happen. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. I know he's looking down and saying, how did this happen? <laughs> I didn't mean for it to go that far. <laughs> and then the second uh, gift is to give you a photo of the backdrop the website, the website looks like that has your name now embossed on it. So, thank you. So now we turn to the reception part, and we'd like all of you to join us. The reception's going to be two flights up. We will have students who can walk people up the stairs, or you can take the elevator and go up and share some time with one another and to enjoy the refreshments. Thank you all for coming, and thank you, Mark and Heather.